Hey, Big Anklevich here, author, podcaster, and toy enthusiast. Got a little bit more to say about Toy Fair today. Come with me as we look at reproductions. And then you'll miss every toy you've ever owned. People have been cashing in on nostalgia for a very long time. Everyone gets old, and as soon as you do, you don't want to be. Of course, you can't reverse aging, but... You can surround yourself with things that remind you of your youth. Those days of yore and times gone by. That's what we're all doing here, right? Collecting old toys that we loved as kids or new six inch super realistic versions of those old toys. It's been big business for years, repackaging our childhood in a new box so that they can sell it to you one more time. Every movie is a remake, or a reboot, or a sequel, or a prequel. So it kind of surprised me when I saw the reaction of Hasbro's announcement of their new retro line of Star Wars figures. These are exact, or nigh-on exact replicas of the original six Star Wars figures that were released in 1978. They're not gentle giant repros that are giant sized. They're not new versions of those six characters done in a more realistic look or even a classic Kenner inspired look. They are exact repros. My feed filled up with videos reacting to this announcement. Most people were negative, but for different reasons. Some are disillusioned with Hasbro's lack of creativity and direction, some are upset that these toys are going to make collecting vintage figures more difficult because you'll have to watch out for the repros. Watch out for the munchies! Some are upset that it will make collecting vintage figures less lucrative. All those toys they spent good money on will be less valuable should they decide to sell them off. Why has Hasbro decided to go this route now? Well, I think the writing was on the wall, really. I don't have any sales figures or anything, but I'm willing to bet that sales of toys to kids have seriously dropped off in the last few decades. This is me judging things by what my own kids have been asking for for Christmas each year and the like, and supplementing that with what I see on news stories about what the top toys are. My kids have been asking for electronics, cell phones, headphones, trackpads, cameras, tablets. When I see stories about the top toys, they're always electronics themselves, or something that incorporate electronics, like the Lego robot you program with your phone, or the Osmo Genius kits that you do puzzles and games in physical space with the aid of your phone or tablet, or even StickBots, which you use to create your own stop-motion films with their app on your phone. They are not the new line of action figures out from the new cartoon or movie. There are some kids that dig on assembling a collection of Star Wars guys, but way less than there used to be. Hasbro's most recent report indicated that sales from their Star Wars license was down considerably. I think it's mostly old guys like me that are buying this kind of stuff. I mean, look what everyone was talking about after Toy Fair. Ninja Turtles? Dolph Lundgren and Frank Langella He-Man the movie figures? Predator figures? The only thing that's current at all seems to be the Marvel movie figures. As I said in my last video, it might as well have been the 1989 Toy Fair rather than the 2019. It seems like it's all a matter of supply and demand. People want the old stuff, the stuff from their childhood. Hasbro has been pumping out stuff from the new movies. People aren't nearly as excited for them. They don't want them. Here's the five below by my house, choked with Black Series figures from Rogue One that won't even sell at $5. And holy crap, here's a friggin' three and three quarter inch Constable Zuvio that they're still trying to unload. Constable Zuvio! You don't see original trilogy toys doing as much peg warming though. Like I said, the writing's been on the wall for a while. Super 7 started doing reaction figures in 2013. They made Kenner style action figures for properties that never got that treatment. Starting with Alien and then moving on to all kinds of shows that people love and have always wished they could have action figures of, like Jaws, 
Predator, Goonies, Back to the Future, Taxi Driver, Kramer vs. Kramer, Driving Miss Daisy, and so on. They sold well, so they expanded their licenses to the nth level, producing figures for everything. The figures don't speak to me at all. I mean, if they didn't look like crappy old Kenner figures, I might be interested, but I'm not a fan of fake nostalgia. These aren't old figures of Back to the Future. They're just figures that are made to look like they're old. I'd rather have figures that are made with all the skill and love and detail that modern toys are made with instead. I've never bought a reaction figure. Although at Toy Fair, they announced reaction figures of Pee Wee's Playhouse. And I think if I ever see those figures, I'll be buying them. I mean, Pee Wee's Playhouse. I loved Pee Wee. And is there likely to be anywhere else that I can get a conky or a cherry action figure? Ever? I don't think so. Last year, I started seeing these Transformers repros on the shelves. They didn't seem to sell that well, and my guess is because they were freaking expensive. They wanted 70 bucks for a repro of the 80s Devastator. It can't be worth that much. No way. I didn't see any of them sell until they started going on clearance. I grabbed a hot rod myself when I saw him finally make it down to $7. But my threshold was lower than most everyone else because the Devastators and Starscreams were gone long before then. Looks like the repros sold well enough, though, because they now have Optimus Prime repros on the shelves. And they're still asking an outrageous price for them. Supposedly, a Soundwave repro is coming soon as well. Think they'll ever make a G1 Megatron repro? Click, click, yeah, probably not. They're already putting out repros of the early Black Series figures in the Archive line. So what would make anyone think that they wouldn't try out reproing the most valuable figures they've ever made? I personally can't blame them. The toy business seems to be a whole lot of throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. I mean, some of our favorite things have come from that process. He-Man is big. What if we did something a lot like He-Man but uh, cat-themed? And the Thundercats are born. What about He-Man but... Kids love bugs, let's make it bug-themed. And the sectars are born. What about He-Man for girls? And we have She-Ra. And on and on they went. It's also risky business out there. I mean, how many of those companies that made the toys you loved from the 80s still exist? How was Kenner showing at the Toy Fair this year? What did you think of Coleco's stuff at the Toy Fair this year? So, can I fault Hasbro for trying some things that they think are safe bets? No. Hell, they laid off a bunch of people this past year. They really need a safe bet or two. I never would have thought that the company producing the Star Wars toy line would be having a hard time, but there it is. Again, it all comes down to supply and demand. They're providing the supply for a demand that they perceive exists. Maybe they're wrong. Maybe there isn't any demand for those repros. If so, they probably won't make any more waves of figures. But considering that the pre-orders are completely sold out, I get the feeling that they might be here to stay. Somebody out there wants them, even if it might not be you. That's the other great thing about the free market. Nobody is gonna make you buy these guys. If you're not interested, if they're not for you, then, then don't buy them, it's that easy. Maybe the next thing they try will be more to your liking and you can buy those instead. I think one thing is for certain, toys are not going away. There will always be somebody out there making toys. Even if Hasbro gets so bad that they go belly up, some other company will just pick up the slack. Probably buy up their licenses too and keep on making toys. There's no reason to fear or be upset. Just buy what you like, don't buy what you don't, keep calm and carry on. Thanks for watching, folks. Like, subscribe, notification bell. Thanks. Also, check out my podcast. You don't even have to buy it. It's totally free. It's called the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine, and we do audiobook short stories for you to enjoy when you're doing something like driving to work or going jogging. It's like reading, but even easier and way hipper, too. Check it out. Link's in the description. 
And please comment, what's your opinion of this repro phenomenon? Is it here to stay or just a flash in the pan? The desperate attempt of a failing industry to bring a little infusion of cash so they can keep going a little bit longer. Leave a comment, let's talk some toys. See you next time.